Hey, this is Verna Joe from the Spanish Fork Senior Citizen Center. We invite you to relax and enjoy our program. We hope you'll find it informative. We hope that it makes you smile and laugh, deep belly laugh. As always, we hope that you'll come soon to the Spanish Fork Senior Center so we can always surround you with people who care. Change, hut. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisibly, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, Spanish Fork. I'm Heather Lyman, nurse with Aspen Ridge Home Health and Hospice. And boy, is it hot out there right now. And we are looking at another week of 90 plus temperatures. So it is really important to drink enough during, especially during weather like what we're having right now. Um, part of the problem with, with dehydration is that some of the symptoms, especially the early symptoms, can be mild and they can kind of be just generic. Some of the early symptoms are um, dry mouth, fatigue, just mild muscle cramps, um, a little bit of confusion, sleepiness, irritability. So I have most of those symptoms right now. So it can be easy to overlook the, the early signs of dehydration. Some of the more, the more severe signs are low blood pressure, confusion, difficulty walking, um, a fast pulse or heart rate, fast breathing, a bloated feeling in your abdomen, um, dry, sunken eyes, severe muscle cramps, and convulsions. By then, it can quickly turn into a critical event. So what do we do? What can we do to, to avoid that? The answer is just rehydrate, but that can be hard. How do we know how much, how much we need? A good rule of thumb is to take a third of your body weight and convert that into ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you need 50 ounces of, of fluid per day. That, that's roughly about seven cups of water. It can be kind of hard to just chug a lug seven glasses of water. So I have some, some quick tips to help you get a little more hydration. First, get, get a, a water flask. You can get those at Walmart. The one I have carries about 23 ounces of water. So I know I need to drink two of those per day and that helps me keep track. I tell a lot of my patients, um, it, like I said, it can be really hard to just drink a whole glass of water at a time or, or two or three to get your seven glasses in. But if you keep a glass of water or a water bottle at your side as you're watching TV, every time a new commercial comes on, take a couple of sips, because there's about five commercials in a row usually, so you're at least getting five sips right then, and those commercials come on pretty often, you'll get more water than you think you're gonna get just by taking a few sips at a time. Cut up some fruit and put in a, a water picture in the fridge. Sometimes just that little bit of flavor makes water a little more palatable. Watermelon, honeydew, cantaloupe all have a really high water content. So eat your water if you don't want to just drink all day long. And the other thing that you can do is just get in the habit of every time you brush your teeth, and with every meal, drink a glass of water. There's four or five glasses right there. So I hope that these tips are helpful and we need you seniors around. We love you, stay safe out there. All right, welcome to our Wellness Bridge exercise session today and I'm Kara Shaw. And what I want to have us um, do for a few minutes is as we age, we also have a harder time getting up from chairs and couches and also a harder time walking around. So today I'm gonna to work a little bit on our lower body. So find a chair or the couch, or if you're on it, you're already there. 
and we'll take a seat and then we're gonna just start out warming up gradually so I want you to lift your left leg or your right leg left right left just care just lift them up you can do your arms a little bit with it too for a little bit more exercise that's what we're gonna start with to warm up that lower body now we're gonna go ahead we'll finish so five four three two and one then I'm gonna have you lift and straight out flexing that foot lift and down with right now the left lift straight out lift right those quads need to do a lot of work for us to move us around get us up off chairs and couches so we've really got to strengthen those and keep those going so out up down and then on your left straight out up down again right straight out and you're flexing that foot because that will get that quad a little bit more and up down now we're going to do something that i call fast feet and we're going to be running in place so get those feet moving an important thing too sit straight up good posture hold in those abs now we're going to put our hands out front and what you're going to do is you're going to jump and keep running you got to keep running this will get you cardio a little bit too and jump there you go keep running jump good keep those feet moving fast and jump good all right now what i'm going to do is we do squats and things and this is really how we're getting out of chairs so what i want you to do is not use your hands if you can if you need to use your hands then use them to stand up i want your feet about shoulder width apart and then we're just going to sit down in your chair or the couch and stand up your weight should be in your back heels with this and then stand up and if you need a little bit of support then push off a little bit but try to do it without because that's going to really strengthen those quads we need that strength to keep us moving keep us getting up and out of chairs and the couch so let's just do that another five good four keep it up you're doing great three two good and one good and if you want a little bit more difficult then you can go here and don't sit down and up and you're just squatting low keeping the weight in the heels and up and down up and down great well that is our fuel exercises for your lower body wanting to get you up out of chairs and couches and moving around and i think a big key is keep active keep moving and especially with the summer i want to encourage everyone to drink a lot of water have a water bottle around wherever you go if you're sitting by your couch have the water bottle there if you go to the table have the water bottle by you constantly be sipping on this because with the heat and the sun you need much more hydration in the in the summer so this is Kara Shaw with our wellness bridge group and we um, encourage you to stay active and stay hydrated hey it's time for Beverly good well then laugh today <laughs> okay i'm going to read one of my husband's favorite jokes because we have he and i had 13 children so this is one of the jokes that he thought was great he just loved it a woman walks into the savannah downtown welfare office trailed by 15 kids wow the social worker exclaims are they all yours yep they are all mine the flustered mama sighs having heard that question a thousand times before she says sit down billy all the children rush to find seats well says the social worker then you must be here to sign up i'll need all your children's names well to keep it simple the boys are all named billy b-i-l-l-y 
And the girls are named Billy, B-I-L-L-I-E. In dis disbelief, the caseworker says, are you serious, they're all named Billy? Their mama replied, well, yes, it makes it easier. When it's time to get them out of bed and ready for school, I yell, Billy. And when it's time for dinner, I just yell, Billy. And they all come running. And if I need to stop the kid who's running into the street, I just yell, Billy, and all of them stop. It's the smartest idea I ever had, naming them all Billy. The social worker thinks this over for a bit, then wrinkles her forehead and asks, but what if you just want one kid to come and not the whole bunch? Well, then I call them by their last name. <laughs> oh. Ooh, he Ooh. loved that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you didn't think that was that funny, but my husband loved it. <laughs> oh, I understand that, yeah. I, I thought it was pretty smart myself. Yeah. Okay. A farmer in the country has a watermelon patch, and upon inspection, he discovers that some of the local kids have been helping themselves to a feast. The farmer thinks of ways to discourage the profit-eating situation. So he puts up a sign that reads, warning, one of these watermelons contains cyanide. He smiled smugly as he watched the kids run off the next night without eating any of his melons. The farmer returns to the watermelon patch a week later to discover that none of the watermelons have been eaten, but finds another sign that reads, now there are two. Ooh, oh boy, oh boy. Oh no, okay. How smart the farmer. Do you want another one? Yeah, please. Okay, this is a good one. A young doctor had moved out to a small community to replace a doctor who was retiring. The older doctor suggested that the young one accompany him on his rounds so the community, community could become used to a new doctor. The first house, a woman complains, I've been a little sick to my stomach. The older doctor says, well, you've probably been overdoing the fresh fruit. Cut back on the amount you're, you've been eating and see if that does the trick. As they left, the younger doctor said, you didn't even examine that woman. How'd you come up to that diagnosis so quickly? I didn't have to. You noticed I dropped my stethoscope on the floor in there. When I bent to pick it up, I noticed a half dozen banana peels in the trash. That was probably making her sick. The young doctor said, pretty clever. If you don't mind, I think I'll try that at the next house. Arriving at the next house, they spent several minutes talking with a younger woman. She said that she just didn't have the energy she once did and said, I'm feeling terribly run down lately. You've probably been doing too much for the church, the young doctor told her. Perhaps you should cut back a bit and see if that helps. As they left, the elder doctor said, I know that woman well. Your diagnosis is almost certainly correct. She's very active in the church, but how did you arrive at it? I did what you did at the last house. I dropped my stethoscope. And when I went down to retrieve it, I noticed the pastor under the bed. <laughs> oh, uh oh, cut. <laughs> that sounds like an Andy Mayberry kind of story. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shelly from Spring Gardens in Mapleton, and I just wanted to invite you to come every Thursday. We do manicures and hand massages at Spring Gardens Mapleton. And so anytime between 1.30 and 3.30, come on over. We'd love to have you come, give you a chance to pamper you a little bit. And then on Fridays, we every other Friday, we have bingo. And then on the opposite Fridays, we have keno. And that is at 1.30 every Friday. So I'm hoping to see you there. And then the second Thursday, of next month, we will be here at the Spanish Fork Senior Citizen Center to do hand massages and blood pressure checks. So please come and see us here. Hey, thanks guys. Hi, this is Mary from the Spanish Fork Senior Center Kitchen. Let's see what's on the menu. On Friday, September 2nd, is our membership meal, and we're having chicken cordon bleu and baked potatoes with a little holiday sauce. On Monday, September 5th, 
We are closed for Labor Day, so don't come in. On Thursday, September 8th, we're having beef hot dogs on a bun. On Monday the 12th, we're having taco soup and it is delicious. On Thursday, September 15th, we're having meatloaf, one of somebody's favorites. On Monday the 19th is vegetable soup. On Thursday, September 22nd is teriyaki chicken with rice. On Monday, September 26th is meatballs, and Thursday the 29th is southern chicken tenders with mashed potatoes and country gravy and a biscuit. We love cooking for you. Hope to see you all soon. Hello, we're with Golden Age Services. We're local businesses. I'm Tracy Padgett. I work with Goldcrest Realty and help seniors buy and sell properties. My name is Ruben Valorio. I am a financial planner and my goal is to help educate the community on finances to help them make better decisions. Hi, I'm Judith Baker and I do healthy baking. I teach skills on sourdough and offer products to help people feel better and eat yummy food. So one thing that Golden Age Services does is we host bingo at the member luncheon on the first Friday of every month. So it's after our luncheon, please stay, and we provide lots of great prizes, lots of fun, and it's again, it's the first Friday of every month. And right after the bingo, you can expect us to stick around and help anybody that has questions about how to use their phone or any other technology to come in, ask questions, and we can help you resolve some of those and teach you a couple of things that might be helpful when you're using your technology. And we're a fun group. You'll love to come and just socialize. Yes, it's time for more jokes. Okay, if Noah had lived in the United States today, the story may have gone something like this. The Lord spoke to Noah and said, in one year I'm going to make it rain and cover the whole earth with water until all flesh is destroyed. But I want you to save the righteous people and two of every kind of living thing on earth. Therefore, I am commanding you to build an ark. In a flash of lightning, God delivered the specifications for an ark. In fear and trembling, Noah took the plans and agreed to build the ark. Remember, said the Lord, you must complete the ark and bring everyone on board in one year. Exactly one year later, fierce storm clouds covered the earth and all the seas of the earth went into a tumult. The Lord saw that Noah was sitting in his front yard weeping. Noah, he shouted, where is the ark? Lord, please forgive me, cried Noah. I did my best, but there were big problems. First, I had to get a permit for construction, and your plans did not your did your plans did not meet the building codes. I had to hire an engineering firm and redraw the plans. Then I got into a fight with OSHA over whether or not the, or the ark needed a sprinkler system and approved flotation devices. Then my neighbor objected, claiming I was violating zoning ordinances by building the ark in my front yard. So I had to get a variance from the city planning commission. Then I had problems getting enough wood for the ark because there was a ban on cutting trees to protect the spotted owl. I finally convinced the U.S. Forest Service that I really needed the wood to save the owls. However, the Fish and Wildlife Service wouldn't let me take the two owls. The carpenters formed a union and went on strike. I had to negotiate a settlement with the National Labor Relations Board before anyone would pick up a saw or hammer. Now I have 16 carpenters on the ark, but still no owls. When I started rounding up other animals, an animal rights group sued me. They objected to me taking only two of each kind on board. The suit is pending. Meanwhile, the EPA notified me that I could not complete the ark without filling an environmental impact statement on your proposed flood. They didn't take very kindly to the idea that they had no jurisdiction over the conduct of the creator of the universe. Then the Army Corps of Engineers demanded a map of the proposed floodplain. I sent them a globe. Right now, I'm trying to resolve a complaint filed with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission that I am practicing discrimination by not taking atheists to board. The IRS has seized my assets, claiming that I'm building the ark in preparation to flee the country to avoid paying taxes. I just got a notice from the state that I owe them some kind of user tax and failed to register the ark as a recreational watercraft. 
And finally, the ACLU got the courts to issue an injunction against further construction of the art Ark, saying that since God is flooding the earth, it's a religious event and therefore unconstitutional. <laughs> I really don't think I can finish the ark for another five or six years. Noah waited. The sky began to clear, the sun began to shine, and the seas began to calm. A rainbow arched across the sky. Noah looked up hopefully. You mean you're not going to destroy the earth, Lord? No, he said sadly. I don't have to. The government already has. Oh, yeah. Boy, isn't that the truth? <laughs> well, we probably should have that one. Okay. Let's do one more. I have some blonde jokes. We can forget oh, that one. Some blonde jokes, yeah. I have some blonde There's jokes. Room for blonde jokes. Yeah, well, I have a bunch of those. Okay, let's see. Blonde jokes. A man was. In, front, in his front yard mowing the grass when his beautiful blonde female neighbor came out of the house and went straight to the mailbox. She opened it, looked inside, slammed it shut, and stormed back into her house. A little later, she came out of her house again, went to the mailbox, again opened it, and slammed it shut again, angrily going back into the house. As the man was getting ready to edge the lawn, here she came again. She marched to the mailbox, opened it, and then slammed it closed harder than ever. Puzzled by her action, the man asked her, is something wrong? To which she replied, there certainly is. My crazy computer keeps telling me I've got mail. <laughs> yeah. A typical blonde. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, there was a blonde that lived in a, lived in a small house at the corner of 4th Avenue. She had a small shed in her backyard where she kept gardening tools. One day, she thought she saw smoke coming out of the roof of the shed. In a panic, she called 911. They answered and said, this is Joe. Is there an emergency? The blood replied, yes, my shed is on fire. Joe said, don't panic. Help is on the way. Where do you live? The blonde said, in a house. Now hurry. Joe calmly responded back, how are we supposed to get there? The blonde answered back, duh, a big red truck. Yeah, that's easy to understand. <laughs> okay. One more, one more. Um, a blonde and a brunette, sisters, just inherited a ranch. They thought that the ranch looked a little empty, so they went to buy a bull together. They had only $500 to spend. The brunette uh, found an ad in the paper that, that had a healthy bull for sale for $500. So the brunette went to look at him. The brunette decided to buy him. She had to send a telegram to her sister telling her to, to come with a trailer to get the bull. The telegram cost a dollar per word. The brunette sent the word comfortable, comfortable. The telegram guy asked, why comfortable? Because my sister's a blonde and she will read it slow and she will think it says, Come for the bull. Oh. <laughs> Is that bad? Bad, man. Thank okay. you, Beverly. Hi, Verdi Joe, Spanish Fork Senior Citizen Center. I just wanted to let you know some things that we're going to be doing in September. We've got the September Happy Birthday Party on Thursday the 8th at noon. We have National Grandparent Day on Monday the 12th and we've got some ideas of things for you to do with your grandchildren. And we've also got a fall foliage trip that's going on Friday the 23rd up to Sundance Lift, and then we're going to ride up to the top and have lunch at the Bear Lodge up there. So in October, we have Ras Guitars from Orem is coming to do a presentation on guitars. Uh, that will be on Wednesday the 5th from 6 to 7. Please sign up for that. We're also doing an Enchanted Charmer celebration, Wednesday the 12th at noon. There is a sign-up sheet on that. Please come. Dress up like little witches. Let's come and have fun. Then we've also got our Halloween party. That will be on Monday the 30th at 10 o'clock to noon. That's also a sign-up. But we've got lots of fun things we're doing then. Please dress up. Have fun. Please come and join us at the Senior Center. You can see I'm wearing some letter for my friend Andrew.